Hi there. Welcome to another video on working with private chat GPT. So today I'm going to discuss uh, one of the use cases where I find myself interacting with LLM models more often. And this is uh, when I'm about to start a project for teaching purposes, or if I have a problem in mind, but I'm not entirely sure where to start from. So I like to dump as much information as possible to LLMs. And uh, that way the conversation is much better because the quality of output that I get helps me engage in a conversation. But before I dive into the use case today, what I would say is that there are two parts for effective prompting. One is that before you engage in a conversation, you have an opportunity to tell LLM on how to behave or what role you take. And that way is the LLM would know, oh, I see. Okay, so you are saying that I become a software architect versus I become a lawyer. And that way is the kind of questions that you ask will come from the perspective of that domain expert. So that is part one. You really have this power an opportunity to tell LLM what to become. And after that, you can give as much information as possible about your use case, and then let's see where things go. So today I'm going to talk about the use case from a perspective of software development. And before I start uh, with my question, I first will paste the, the role that I would like LLM to take. And in this case, I am telling explicitly that you are an expert software architect with years of experience. And I'm also giving additional context that you, the LLM, are expert in Node.js and TypeScript and MongoDB. So that when getting the answers from LLM, LLM will have context on what role uh, he or she has taken. So that is part one that I do usually in the first paragraph. And the second paragraph is all about giving context about the problem that I'm thinking about. So I'm going to paste that part as well. As you can see, this was a lot to write. So I thought that I would write it up front and, and talk more about it. So as you can see, the first part is this is you means LLM, who you are and what you are expert in. And then the second one is I means the person who is questioning needs to do something. So I'm saying that we need to build an Instagram like photo sharing app with similar features. And I'm asking the LLM to help me organize my action item so that I can take some actions in the real world. And then with each step, I need concrete code so that I can read up front. Okay, so this is what I need to do. That is what I need to do. And I'm giving more and more context. For example, if designing the scheme, I need to know the fields and types. So specifically on the persistence layer, what I need. And then, then we go to the application, what types we would need. And I limited the scope because Building Instagram took years, so I also do not want to overwhelm LLM or myself. So I'm saying let's start small and let's scope the first few set of features. And the additional requirement that I gave is uh, don't use Mongoose library, rather rely on the official Node.js driver and uh, leverage TypeScript. So as you can see, this is a lot, but the whole idea of for me making this video is before you can get the high quality answer back from anybody, it's, it's, it could be a human or LLM, the, the clarity is needed from your side. The your means who, whoever is asking question. So if you really want to be successful in, in getting quality answers from LLMs and automate your things, you as a person requesting should have mental clarity and which is why doing effective writing is extremely important. And this is one of the areas where I, I tend to like uh, where industry is going. It's because tools are available, but we need to work on ourselves in getting more and more clear about what we need in life, what, what we need from other systems, for example. And in this case, I have written one part. You may, you may write the same or different depending upon what exactly you're trying to get out of the conversation. So without any further ado, let me just send this. And before I do that, I need to select the model. So I'll go and select Lama 3 here. And as I hit, let's see what answer we get. So, okay, so Lama is, is taking our inputs and doing some things. So let it finish. But meanwhile, I'll, I'll share that I have made this entire thing full screen so that I can maximize this, the screen space. 
and it's easier for me to read. If you want to do something similar, you can go to settings and then you can go to interface and then you can say full screen mode to on or off, see how this is changing in the background. But now coming back to what we were trying to do. So it says it's a fantastic project. So step one really is to design the database schema. And then step two is to set up a node and express server. These are the two high level steps. And within the first step, it outlined that we will need three collections. So if you are new to MongoDB, it's a NoSQL document database. So they don't have a concept of tables and rows. Tables are known as collections. Rows are known as documents. So three collections we need. If you read MySQL, it'll be three tables. So we need users, posts, and tags. And within that, what schema we need for user, what schema we need for post. And the post has the relationship with the area of object IDs with tags, because any, if you've used Instagram even once, you know, you can upload a photo and then you can start adding tags and those get attached to the post. So the post has image and post has tags and related date feeds on when it was created and updated. And similarly, tag has certain things. Then we have user schema. And this is all at the level of the database. But now when we come to TypeScript, when we need to write our application code, uh, Llama has created the interfaces that will map to our database collection. And as we continue, we have one for user, one for post, one for tag. And then it says you need to create the server. And the reason you need to create server is because the idea is that people from all over the world are going to use your app. So you need to create your APIs and Express.js is one of the mo most popular frameworks in this area. And then you connect to with the database. And then when you connect after that, you can do a get call and you can send the response. And right now it's not filling up the details because we said, let's start small. Let's have the basic scaffolding, which is a good place to be. And after that, you can say, okay, so now let's only focus on creating the post. And then the next step, let's only focus on reading the post and step-by-step step, you can take, take this direction. So I hope that this was useful. The bottom line is uh, even if you use private chat GPT that you have installed your machine or you use any other chat GPT by OpenAI or Claude or somewhere else. Uh, or Mistral, you will still need to have that clarity. And depending upon who you ask, the answer may differ. Even if I ask the same person, in this case, Lama, the, the answer may differ. And that is one thing that the outputs are not deterministic. They are probabilistic in nature. So they try to find out what next token or what next word they're going to print. All right. So I hope that this was useful. If, uh, if there are any areas that are confusing to you as a as AI evolves, are these the tools that confuse you or, or you're getting overwhelmed or you're trying to develop something with the AI system and you're getting confused? Please let us know in the comments and we will make videos to bring more clarity. All right, until next time, keep practicing, keep trying and take care of yourself. We'll see you soon.